Hey guys, this is Neon Nezi, back again with another Destiny Nights video. And today I am going to be doing something a little bit different, wherein so far I've been giving the newer players tips and things that, that, should, that they should be aware of, things that they should be doing. Now this video is going to tell you guys everything or hopefully everything that comes to my mind that you guys should not be doing. All right, so let's get started, guys. Um, the idea that that was, and I, again, guys, I give, I give um, credit where credit is due. So this, uh, the video idea, or this, the idea for this video was given to me by a fellow guild mate called Sinister with an H. So thank you again, Sinister. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of the people in this community are going to appreciate it. So let's get started. First off, I'm sure that if you guys have just started playing the game, you guys have noticed that how hard it is to awaken units, right? It's really hard to awaken units simply because this one factor over here, which is the, hold on now. It is the, where can I, hold on. This thing right here, the legendary awakening materials, which have four of the, the green thing with like the wings on both sides that is super rare to get so first of all you guys can get this from a number of places all right you guys can get this from um getting uh getting good stars like finishing all the requirements in scenario mode um you guys can get this via real life money obviously buying a few packs which i wouldn't recommend doing you guys can actually buy this on the time shop it's super rare with gold which if you guys are early game, I would not recommend doing. And you guys can also buy this in the um, in the black market by using rubies, which again, if you guys are early game, I would not recommend doing. There, I just told you guys a few things that you should not do, all right? Don't buy these Legendary Awakening materials in either shop if you guys are like within your first few months of playing because that's just a waste of rubies. Then you guys can also get this at the Tower of Promises. I can't show you guys here because I've already collected my rewards. But as you guys progress through the stages, you guys will be able to collect, I think, at least two Legendary Awakening materials and two Skill Dragoons. So today's topic is basically going to be about um, evolution. I mean, these are things that I want to mention to you. Um, so the thing is... When you guys get Skill Dragoons, right? I wonder if I have any Skill Dragoons. Yeah, all right. These are Skill Dragoons, and basically what they are, guys, is Enhanced Dragoons will help you enhance the level of your unit. Evolved Dragoons will help you evolve your unit from a certain star to a star that's higher. So 3 star to 4 star, 4 star to 5 star, 5 star to 6 star. Now, Skill Dragoons, guys, are units that can enhance the skill of your unit. And it's so very important to watch this and Legendary legendary um awakening materials because they're so hard to come by i would say legendary awakening materials or lams are the hardest uh, resource to farm followed by skilled dragoons so when you first start playing right and let's say you guys get rock caesar you guys think holy cow he's so cool you guys go ahead awaken him you guys evolve him to six you guys awaken him to six and then it's like wait hello someone please help i i can't like i have this caesar that's six stars but i can't auto or i can't get through hard mode. i can't get through hell mode well that's simply because guys you invested in the wrong unit when it came to early game i'm not gonna lie guys normal mode is super simple once you guys get to hard and hell you'll start to notice the importance of support units yes guys late game it's all about the damage it's all about the nuking but to everybody out there especially if you guys are free to play you guys are at least six months away from late game all right and i'm not telling this to you guys to discourage you guys i'm telling you guys this because you guys have literally six months of growth to look forward to six months of grinding all right there's going to be ups and downs there's going to be times when you guys don't get the unit you want you guys just can't farm that one specific orb or crest and then you get it and it's just like yes like that feeling guys that's what rng is all about and the thing is if you guys create a team early game with caesar benito and julian you're not going anywhere because that team can nuke but without the right orbs and crests, you guys are not nuking anything. So just a 
so just a um, just a tip from myself. Again, um, if you guys want, we can go over the units that are really, really good. But then again, what I've noticed, guys, is that in the global server, not all the units that I've mentioned have been released. So I'm just going to tell you guys this. Early game, all right, early game, units that reduce cooldowns, that have a ton of breaks, that have a ton of heals or healing potential, that have buffs such as defense buff or damage taken reduction buffs, those units are super good because they help you survive. And survival is key because towards the beginning of the game, you guys don't have the gold to max out your orbs and crests. And towards the beginning of the game, you guys only have one or two star orbs and crests, which I would not recommend you guys taking up more than level nine, to be honest. Like, level six is where I stopped. All right? Uh, the video after this, I will be making a video on how to progress from early game to late game uh, as detailed as I can, which it really can't overlap with this game, but, you know, I'll try my best. And again, guys, I do have a real life, so it's super hard for me to, like, make more than one video a day. And I don't want to pack too much content into one video because then it's going to overwhelm you guys by just the content I have. So, again, invest LAMs and um, your skill Dragoons into key core units such as i'm just going to give out a few names here and if you guys have them you know if you guys have them uh well and good if you guys can get them well and good but if they haven't been released on the global server then you know just focus on the ones that you guys do have so paper adonis i would say and also guys if you guys are early game i would say almost never take them up to six stars awakened because when you guys need to um in my opinion, the the way to maximize... I'm, I'm sorry, guys. We're going to have to wait for the tier list for like just a few... Just like a minute or two. Let's look at this, right? We're going to go back to um, Ebonia. We're going to go to Awaken. And look at the stage details, guys. In my opinion, for a unit to be at its best, it only needs to be at stage 5. All right, stage 6 is good because it gets like a little bit of bonus, but the bonuses aren't that big. Like, all stats increased... The stats aren't increased by too much. So if you guys just get to level 5, which is stage 1 is just materials. Stage 2 is also uh, materials. Stage 3 is materials plus 1 LAM. And it's materials, materials. And then stage 6, guys, is materials plus 2 LAMs. And with those 2 LAMs that you guys are going to evolve one unit, or that, that, that you guys are going to take, these are for 5 star units, by the way, guys. For like, I'm talking about five units because five units need one in stage three and then two in stage six. Um, I think four star units uh, only need one at stage six. But then again, it's it's the fact that if you have a five star unit and it's your only five star unit, you guys are wanna you, you guys are gonna want to invest in that one unit. So you guys are gonna put one LAM here and two LAM here where you guys could have just used the resources for that one unit, and you guys could have awakened two other units and have them all at five stars. And the reason why I say five stars awaken, guys, is because at five star awakens, you guys can have slots one, two, three, and four crests. You guys can equip crests on all four slots. And that's a huge bonus to your to your, to your your unit. Um, okay. One thing that I should also probably just tell you guys right now is that in the codex, and I'll make a different video on the codex, but in the codex, guys, for five star units, there are achievements. See this? Ooh, achievements. So basically here, when you evolve it to uh, level six, you guys get one LAM. So each unit, all right, each unit, whether it's a four star or a five star, and three stars in this game, guys, are kind of underwhelming simply because the rate of getting a 5-star is so high, so 5-stars have a lot of utility, and 3-stars generally don't. There are a few 3-star units that are um, kind of good, but in all honesty, guys, all 3-star units are pretty much subpar. So, here, guys, if you guys evolve a 5-star unit, or if you guys evolve a 4-star uh, unit to level, see this, to level, uh, or to 6-stars, yeah, you guys will get one LAM. So just with that, guys, all units are self-sustaining in the fact that 
with just evolving each unit to uh, six stars, you guys will be able to sufficiently have all of your four star and five star core units at six stars. At sorry, at five stars awakened and able to equip five different crests. I'm sorry, four different crests. Um, something else I wanted to say, I forgot. All right, I just lost my train of thought. Let's go back to the codex. All right, so these are units that you guys should be, uh, should try to invest in your LAMs. And again, guys, if you guys are really, really early game, evolving does not happen. All right, you guys aren't going to evolve one of you. I'm not, I'm just telling you guys because. Now the game is out for a few days. Some of you guys might have the resources to evolve and awaken your units, which is fine because, um, which is fine because that's just how you progress through the game. But in all honesty, you guys, I think people are at least a week or two, like from the day you start, you guys are always going to be, I think, like a week or two from getting, like your first, uh, first batch or like your first four units at six stars. So. Units that you guys should be aware of. Again, I made a video on this already, but just to recap. And these are all guys going to be support units because, again, support is what matters early game. Late game, yes, it's all about the new king. It's all about the speed. But early game, guys, it's really about just being safe. So Paper Adonis, Rock, Arcana, Scissor, Elki, Paper, Francisca, Scissor, Carlota, Scissor Yanook, he has lifesteal. Paper Kerr, doesn't have any heals, but he has a ton of breaks. Rock Yona is really good healer. Then Paper Chen. Rock Jun, who doesn't have any heals, but he has a ton of damage and, and utility via cooldown reductions. Then we have literally no one in the Trogar. <laughs> There's no support that I would recommend using in the Trigar, at, at, at least for like autoing through, through the, through the uh, stages of normal hard and hell, and nightmare. So, okay, and then so that's everything that I wanted to communicate to you guys. Now let's head over to uh, what Sinister wanted me to tell you guys, which again, I didn't even think about. Right, I didn't even think about this. And if you guys have tips and tricks that you guys haven't played the game for a while and you guys want me to share with other other um, other players or just a community in general, comment down on the comment section down below and I will make it a point to at least mention them in my next video. So let's go over here to this where I feel like a lot of people, newer players don't know what this is. This is the Destiny Forge and the Destiny Shift. And this is late game super super late game because in this game guys when you guys evolve units all right i'm going to show you guys an example over here really really quick um who do i have a dupe of i have a tasia all right actually i can just go to a three star unit can't i all right so let's go to roberto guys all right and let's go to his skills now i want to awaken this guy first of all i can use a skill dragoon this is another mistake a lot of players make Skill Dragoons are only for 5-star units, right guys? Only, only, only for 5-star units. Over here, as you guys can see, I can actually use his um, brother to awaken him. And since I have a Scissor Roberto, it doesn't just have to be a Scissor Roberto. It can be, I think the other Roberto is a Rock Roberto. It can be that guy as well. But if you use a Scissor Roberto and you enhance his skill, what's going to happen is that for my next enhance, I actually need two units. Then I need three, and then I need four. So for every skill to reach level five, you guys are gonna need 10 skill ups. If you guys start investing skill dragoons into your four star and three star monsters, you guys are not gonna have enough skill ups. Also, if you guys, um, if you guys, what was I about to say? Oh my God, there's so many things going through my head. Oh, right. If you guys get a dupe, nat 5, it's not the worst. And this is what Sinister wanted me to warn you guys about. Because in the Destiny Shift, guys, we guys can we can take two units that we don't want, and we can Destiny Shift them into getting a unit that we do want. So right here, just for just for um just to show you guys, I already have a scissor Yanook. And I already have a Rock Julian, so I'm just going to use these units over here. Boom, boom. 
and you guys can place a third unit over here but that is only because if i place a third unit here guys it just means that i will not receive the unit that i will receive in the end is not going to be julian yanuk or ingrid but the chance of that happening guys is so low that i just generally don't think about it so here guys we put in julian and yanuk we do the destiny shift cost 3000 gold this is not cheap and we get rock francisca which again guys is a unit that wasn't one of the core units um which wasn't one of the two fodder units that i had again just because i had two units means that there was a chance for me to get either the julian or the um ingrid but the chance of that happening is very low so i would never recommend you guys to have actually three units in there but guys this is so late game because if you guys look at um where's my ingrid Oh, wait. Okay, I didn't use an Ingrid. I used some other unit. Okay, but um, if you guys look at my paper Ingrid over here, let's go back to Heroes. If this thing would just load. It's going to say, like, server disconnect or something. Yep. Let's go over to Heroes, and we're going to go over to... Ingrid is going to in one of these teams. Look at her skills, guys. Her skills are as far up as I want them to be, which is the only reason why I would ever use her. If I if I don't have these skills maxed out, then I can always use dupes as one of the resources to put into her skill ups, guys. This is a mistake a lot of players make. They think just because they got two Ingrids in their first month of playing, they're like, all right, I have two Ingrids. Or like, oh, I have two Adonises. I'm just going to use one in the Destiny Shift. No. Use it for skillups because skillups matter, guys. Skillups make all the difference in the world. They add in one more break. They add in, like, five seconds of cooldown. And all these little, little things can be the line between failure and success when it comes to clearing a stage. Then, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is don't... I've said this recently, but do not invest too much when uh, enhancing orbs and crests, all right? The only orbs and crests that are worth four stars, let's let's look at it this way. I'll tell you guys the, the star level of the, I'll tell you the star amount of the orb and crest and then how far you should take it, all right? If it's a one star or a two star orb or crest, Take it to level 3. Honestly, I would not, but if you guys are having trouble, take it to level 3. It's not a big deal. If you guys have 3 star, 3 star orbs and crests, then it's okay to take it to about level 9. One thing I will say, guys, is that crests are super hard to level up. So, 3 star orbs, take it to level 9. Uh, 3 star crests, take them to level 6. Then, once you guys come across 4 star orbs, and four star crests, I would say you guys can start taking them to level 12 or even level 15 if you guys have the proper substats. One thing I realized just now, guys, is that crests, you guys can actually get pretty decent crests even when they're three stars if they are percentage based and they have a high percentage starting value. So generally, uh, crests start at like plus 2%. If it's higher than plus 2%, like plus 3, plus 4%, then it might be worth it to take level 12 and 15. Again, if the substats are good. All right, we're already at 19 minutes. Really quick, though, before I uh, before I leave, a lot of players are now going to start creating guilds. And this is super important to uh, guild members, but this is, again, so much more important to guild leaders in order to be a good leader. Let me show you guys the guild skill of our guild the top, one of the top guilds in the world. Look at what we've maxed out, all right? We have Adventure Gold. I think that was the first thing that we did. Then I think we did Guild Members. So we increased the limit of members that can join us. Then, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure we went um, Reduction to Enhance Orbs and Crests. Then we did Reduction in Gold to Remove Orb and Crests. And I'm pretty sure then we did add in one uh, vice leader limit just so that we had um, some 
just so that we could uh, have some more guild leaders or guild vice leaders. Then we did special quest, just one, and then we went on to adventure XP. And then we have not spent any of this because we just don't see the point in it. So remember guys, to all the new guilds out there, maximize this first adventure goal. This should take you guys like a month or something, and then maximize the amount of players that can join you guys. These two are key. These two are super, super, super important because one makes your progression in the game so much more faster and the other one lets you have a bigger community within your uh, guild. After you guys do that, uh, what guild leaders should start doing, and if a guild member is watching this, mention this to your guild leader, is that you guys can actually have a gold booster activated every single day. You can activate this actually twice a day but most of guilds only activate them once a day. I think we still also activate them only once a day. And what it does is that it times two out your gold. So if I go into world map, right? And again, this is kind of late game, but if I go into Silvis and I start entering this thing, let's say in total, and I'm not just giving you guys random numbers, this is exactly how much gold I get. When I complete this stage, I get like 1.9k on average, let's say 2k, 2000 gold. With Because of this buff over here, with the faction boss buff, the faction buff, boss, buff will make this um, 4000. And then with the guild buff, will make this, I think, 8000. Which is insane, guys. 8000 gold per freaking run. And because of my speed team, I can do basically like one run per minute. So within 60 minutes, I basically farmed uh, 8,060 uh, times. I mean, can you guys just imagine how that's like later on in the game? And if you guys, um, that's basically like 8,060 times. That's basically, I think that's like 400,000 or something. Let me do the math really quick. Uh, eight times six thousand. That's like four hundred and eighty thousand gold in like a bit more than an hour. That's insane, guys. So again, um, make sure that you guys first, if you're a guild leader or a guild member, let your guild leader know to first maximize your uh, adventure gold then to maximize guild member limit and then these guys are really extras we just did them because we had uh we 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 just wanted to try them out but in all honesty i would suggest just doing just doing this and then this and then you guys could do this i know right uh, nezzy's commentary 10 out of 10 <laughs> and after these three um no joke you guys can literally start doing uh, gold boosters once a day but when you guys activate this gold booster be sure that everybody in the guild can log in around this time and take advantage of the gold booster this is going to be very hard for international guilds but then again it's just it's just a challenge and if you guys can do it it's gonna help you and your entire guild progress at a much faster rate so again guys this was my video on do's and don'ts for newer players there are a lot more do's and don'ts but i feel like i've covered some of them already and some of them i just can't remember at the moment but these, but these are the big ones these are the big traps that people fall into and i just don't want this to happen to you guys so hope you guys enjoyed this video um hope you guys like my content if you guys have any questions or any comments let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any requests let me know in the comment section down below if you guys like my content please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like the video, and until the next time guys, Neon out.